God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> all right hey everybody welcome to another episode of face to truth i am sorry that there's been a, a big gap between episodes lately um i know I, i've gotten i've gotten people writing me like hey what's going on i was doing one a week for like three years in a row um i'm exhausted and i don't get paid for this um and some of you that watch it you don't even like or subscribe so i don't know what you're complaining about Hit the subscribe button, like it, share it with people, tap that button, because otherwise it's like, why am I doing this? I don't know. Is anyone listening? Um, I'm just kidding. I appreciate the support, but I have been insanely busy lately, and uh, so I'm kind of slowing down the podcast a little bit. Um, different priorities going on in my life right now, um, but I'm going to make sure that whenever I do the podcast, I'm going to have an awesome guest on, like my guest this week. Uh, Mr. Paul Moyes, this guy, I have uh, known Paul for uh, 57 years or something like that. Um, <laughs> it's been a long time. We've been oh friends for a long time. Um, and I actually can't believe I haven't had him on yet. Um, I, Me too. Yeah. I, I, I go through the list of to the people and I'm like, and I, I'm like, wait, I, I never had Paul on. And uh, and then someone a while ago was like, remind me, hey, you should have Paul Moyes. I'm like, oh, yeah, I should have Paul Moyes. Anyways, it's long overdue. Paul's an amazing artist, an amazing caricaturist, a great um, oil painter. You know, he, I think we got a little bit of similarities. Like he, he dabbles in the traditional work just as much as the digital, and he's really good at both of them. Um, he also teaches online courses. He is um, super awesome and has a really funny accent. So everybody, please welcome Mr. Paul Moise. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's, it's good to have you on finally, man. Um, yeah, thanks. It's good yeah. to be here. Yeah, it's good. How, so how have you been? What's been going on in, in, in England, England land? In sunny old England. Yeah. Uh, well, it's very wet and, and gray. And, um, but yeah, no, it's good. Uh, you know, just getting on with things, just doing some commissions and uh i've been doing uh, a lot of 3d um so that's kind of my new passion yeah. um it's uh it's still a side project at the moment but mm -hmm. um it's uh it's really time consuming yeah um and uh you know i've, I've shown a few things online but that there are so many things that i haven't uh haven't even shown because i you know it's <coughs> excuse me because inside um it's such a, a huge learning curve and uh, you know, I've been doing it for a couple of years and I've got a whole like hard drive of stuff I haven't shown because it's, it's all crap, but um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. You, you know, when you're sort of learning something new, it's um, uh, yeah. You just end up with loads of stuff that's just worth nothing. It's um, oh, you know, yeah, there course. are, there are some, there's, there's some things I'm working on that, um i've spent a long time on like you know they've taken months yeah and uh and in, in the end i've gone oh what's well, i can't use that <laughs> that's rubbish oh, um man but then there's some things that i've i've spent like a week on and they've been great yeah um just because my skills have developed and you know i've, I've started to learn the um my process a bit more and you know if you want to sort of do it professionally whether it's you know as a someone working for the industry or you know you're doing it as an independent um you want to make sure that you know all of the the nuts and bolts yeah um and you know the, doing 3d whether it's sort of animation rigging uh, sculpting um you kind of have to know a bit of everything so you, you kind of just it's like right i've got to learn everything now um so yeah trying to do that alongside for paid stuff as well 
It's uh, so it's what, challenging. <laughs> what's your what's your end goal with this? Like, are you hoping to um, get into the film industry to be able to do character d- development and design for film? Is that what the? Uh, yeah, so potentially, probably more sort of character design, yeah, um, or, or and even uh, creature design. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I love. Uh, I mean, the the character design comes more from the character side of it, because mm-hmm. um, I was I was watching your uh, your podcast with Earthwell, or, um, uh, oh, Earth, yeah. Earth Oliver, and uh, you know, and you mentioned on that that. Um, they they use his photos as as reference, or, or I think he mentioned it. Um, you know, so a lot of the industry go to his photos just for inspiration, and you know, it's it's that sort of having that sort of input and just drawing and sketching from that sort of thing, rather than celebrities. Because mm. um, I'm not even that into you know I've done the celebrities. Um, because you know, people, it's good for your portfolio and, right, yeah. um, it gets people clicking likes and stuff. And, um, but, uh, in terms of, you know, like really getting into, or what I'm, what I'm interested in, it's sort of what makes regular people tick rather than celebrity. Yeah. Um, well, regular people are a lot more interesting looking. I think. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. So sometimes you're just like, I can't believe you're real. <laughs> like this is amazing. Um, yeah. And that website is just. Oh, I love that. it. And that it's and that talk so that talk with him was just. I could have talked with that guy was, for hours, dude. He's. Yeah. He's. I have no idea what he looks like. He wants to keep that <laughs> secret. Um, but it was an interesting talk, and he's he's a really fun guy to talk to. But um, uh, great photographer. Um, yeah, yeah. One thing I so I've I've been curious about the you know, getting into doing 3d stuff, but I, I just, it's just too, I already have too much I'm doing. Um, right. And, uh, and I know it's one of those things that you really have to commit to. And, um, and I just, it's, it's like, it's same, it's like tattooing. Like people have always said, Hey, you should do tattoos. I'm like, I know a lot of tattoo artists that make really good money. And mm-hmm. could I do that? Yeah. But you have to apprentice for years and I don't have that kind of time. You know, and then, and, and then see, like, I don't even know, you know, there's like things like that where like, I would love to get into it. So, but whenever I see like someone do the the digital, the 3d stuff, it's, it's pretty amazing uh, what you can do with it. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you about it, having to do with like caricature mm-hmm. and, and like illustration type stuff, is there, have you ever tried this or is there a way where you can work fairly quick, like sculpt something like, let's say, let's say you've got to do uh I don't know, like Johnny Depp or something uh, for, for a magazine or something. And you, you want to create your own, you don't want to use what, what any references, but you want to, you want to kind of create your own light source. Could you, could you kind of do a quick light sketch of him and then sculpt something that's fairly close enough, even if it's blobby, just so you can like create your own light source and then use that light oh, source yeah. for reference. Of course. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because that's that's some that's the one way that I thought. Like maybe I wouldn't get into it and try to, like, do like super hyper tight stuff, but just enough that I can come up with my own light sources for things and stuff. What you might want to do is, um, I mean, Blender is is very good for setting up lighting. Uh, if, if you want to do that, um, mm. Blender is great. It, it's kind of a hard sort of learning curve at the first um because there's a lot of uh, keyboard shortcuts and uh it can be quite confusing but um for um starting out um there are some really good apps for the tablet like i i do a lot of my sketching like um sculpting sketches on nomad um mm. it's called nomad sculpt mm. um you can get it on ipad or um whatever tablet um and it's got a really big following because it's um, firstly because it's on the tablet and it's just super easy to use, mm. and um, and you can do really sort of quick uh, sculpts um, in like know, a couple of hours. Just if you want to just sort of get the like basic yeah. forms, yeah, and you don't want to go into high detail or um, do any rigging or animation or anything like that. Um, you know, you can just do something in a, in a couple of hours and then, um, 
you can set up lights inside it as well and um it's hmm. really cool yeah that, I, I don't know i i, I gotta i gotta just try it sometime <laughs> yeah i mean I've, I've often thought you know if i was doing uh sorry to no it's fine. um uh, but yeah i've often thought that if i was still doing illustration um i would try and incorporate it somehow um yeah. so yeah yeah give it a go so now uh since you said if i was still doing illustration so you haven't really been doing it as much what 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 have you been keeping busy with um like more like private commission type things is what you've been yeah just yeah. just portraits really yeah. uh, commissions um and you know, oils and and pencil um and uh nice yeah yeah uh, i mean occasionally um i'll get a student uh, or two and um so i still i still teach the the character but it's it's mostly the commissions and and the 3d um yeah so i'm kind of working towards um sort of getting some maybe freelance uh 3d work uh mm -hmm. um so like maybe just the, the the sculpting side of it just focus on one side just to get um commissions um and sort of veer things towards yeah that. um but yeah and you know it's, it's that finding that time where you're ready to um fully commit to the change you've got to feel sort of confident enough in your um your abilities uh i mean you know i, th I think you're sort of artistically i'm probably I'm probably there but um it's sort of the knowledge of of how things um how things work overall it's uh i don't know i'm probably there already i don't know um yeah i mean it, it's i think i think sometimes um as an artist like when you're especially when you're getting into new things or trying new things out i mean you got the tools in the toolbox but it's, it's still a matter of uh you know there's always something to learn. And especially if it's, uh, if it's, if it's a new genre or something else, it's like, there's, there's going to be some kind of a learning curve, but you, you, you know, how, you know how to draw, you know how to paint. So it's, it, you know, and, and especially when I, I think like in 3d, um, someone like you or me who have been painting and drawing for as long as we have, you kind of think of things th three dimensionally anyways. Yeah. You know? So, um, it was a very natural sort of uh, progression. Yeah, you start. You, yeah, I, I can. You know, I, it, it it's got to be uh, f like fulfilling though to be able to be able to. Because I've one thing I've I've wanted to do is, I mean, I just again it's one of those things where I haven't had the time. But I really, um, just for fun, you know, because it's it's been a while since I've just had fun with art. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. But like, it'd be fun to just get like a clump of actual clay and just like play with it. You know what I mean? See what you could do. Um, I used to, when I was in art school, I, um, I, I remember just walking by the, um, the sculpting classes and it just always looked so much more fun than the classes I was in. <laughs> They're in there just like doing these amazing, like, like full models or, or head sculpts that were just unreal. There's something about the, the hands-on, um, yeah, you know the tactile uh, quality of that. Yeah, the I smell love, of it too. Yeah, I used to love doing the clay, and uh, you know I did a bit of stop motion animation as well. Um, but uh, you know when I started doing three D, it kind of opened up so many other uh, doors as well. Because mm -hmm. um, I'd always wanted to like animate something with a proper armature. So like having oh, a yeah. proper armature in a character. And, uh, you know, I was trying it back before there was even any um, like computer animation. And it was all just stop motion anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, for some reason, I just, I just it was just, I don't know, it seemed like too much hard, like hard work. And I just, <laughs> I just went into the paintings and character yeah. side of things. And I just went in a different direction. Um, but using 3D software is it's less messy for a start you know it's literally contained in yeah. the computer <laughs> and um and it's just all there um and it's it just opens up so much more um, scope for uh, being creative and mm. um yeah but it's it's still you know it's still really hard oh yeah i can imagine 
Um, you, you know the the movie Coraline, right? The... Oh yeah, yeah. That was by um, Leica, wasn't it? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who did that. They they did um, uh, Missing Link and. Oh yeah, I think that is the same. Yeah. Um, I uh, I can't remember what year it was, but I was at the San, San Diego Comic Con, oh. and um, it was right before the movie came out, and they had a booth there, and they had the actual all of the models from the movie. Wow. Um, and they had them different different sizes for different shots and different things, but they had the real things there um, with the clothing and all the kind of, it was insane how intricate and detailed these things were. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was one that you could, excuse me, there's <laughs> one that you could like actually play with. Like you could, you know, you, you could oh. like kind of move it and stuff. And it was just oh, amazing how so awesome. you, you could like turn it just slightly and, um, and then they had like these displays with all these different outfits and all these cool things. It was pretty amazing. They had um, no. a little bit of one of the sets. Uh, so you could see like the, just, it was, it was like looking at a children's book, like alive. Like when you see it, like yeah. you see like the, the wood floors and they purposely make some of the, the boards uneven and all this. It yeah. was just really cool to see that. Oh, I love that movies. It's so good. Yeah. It's, it's incredible that you know that kind of um man what's there's another stop motion that i was thinking of too and i can't oh oh it's it's i think it might be the same people but it's like um it's with like, like a little boy um oh the um yes that was, that was one of the it was after missing link i think um the sword one it was like japanese uh, samurai no, no, no. This one was like a, like a little boy. And it was like a, like a creepy haunted house type thing. And oh yeah, um, Paranorman. Yeah, 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 yeah. That Paranorman. one. I love was it, that. One. Was it Box Trolls? Oh, was oh it... that's great too. Box oh. Trolls, I love. Yes, that movie oh, yeah, is yeah. awesome, man. Oh man. Yeah. You know what? I gotta see that. I gotta watch that again. My four year old daughter is. Um, oh, she loves it. She's at the this age right now where she's just love. Like last night. I, I was like, you know what movie I think you would like? Forrest Gump. <laughs> and she was like, this is boring. Like when it first started. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, 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 trust me. And within the first couple of minutes, she is hooked on the movie. And she was like, she's all like, run, Forrest, run. Yeah. Like, so excited. I, I, I've, lo I've lost count of the amount of times we've said to our kids that, um, you know, you got to see this film, you know, whatever it is. And they're like, oh, no, I don't want to see it. It's boring. And they just want to watch some crap they've seen 50 times. Yeah. And then, then we put it on and, and you know, they're absolutely loving it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That happened with um, Joe Bloom was like, uh, hey, have you seen the new Ghostbuster movie? The, like, the one that just came out. I haven't seen it yet. So and um, no, no spoilers. I won't give any spoilers. Uh, but he told me, he just told me it was, it, it, you have to see this movie. It's so good. It's a sequel to the originals and he goes, it'll make you cry. There are things in that movie that will, uh, that it's, it's so good. It uh, feels like the originals. They captured everything about the originals, the aesthetics, everything. And yeah. he goes, and he told me the same thing. He's like, I'm not going to tell you anything, but you're going to cry when you see this movie. Mm -hmm. So, um, we rented the movie or whatever. And. It, everything he said was completely true, but my four-year-old daughter, she watched it with it, and she if she, now she's obsessed with Ghostbusters. Oh, Everything's right. about Ghostbusters. She loves the movie. We we bought it, and we have watched it so many times now. It's ridiculous, mm -hmm. but now she loves the originals. So she she watches the originals, and it's funny because the the, the first movie actually scares her, um, and. At night, she she's afraid to like go into the her room by herself or different things, and she doesn't want to look out the windows. She sees a reflection at the window, and she's like, "It's a ghost." She's afraid of Slimer and all this stuff. And we're like, "Maybe we shouldn't watch that movie anymore, okay?" But then she cries. She's like, "It's my favorite." She goes, "She says it's so special. It's so special to me." Special, oh. yeah. She says special. Oh. So so then we watch it with her again. I'm like, "What? We're not gonna watch this if you're gonna be afraid." And she's like. So she watches it with us, but she'll go like this while she's watching. <laughs> my, my, my daughter's my daughter's into um, horror films, and she's um, I'm not going to say how old she is because we <laughs> really shouldn't be showing her horror films. <laughs> um, That's funny. 
but you know it's it's it was kind of a gradual thing like you know we showed her one thing it was quite a tame i can't even remember what the movie was it was quite tame and uh <clears throat> and then you know so she was fine with that and then before you know it we're like showing her yeah. you know the hard stuff <laughs> this and, is what uh, a person looks like without a head <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah we did sort of judge our, our parenting um yeah the direction oh, it's funny man lately um so she doesn't like she knows uh naughty words like she does so if we swear or something she calls us out on it but now if there's swearing in a movie she'll try to cover our ears and like like she's trying to protect us from the swear words it's like ah. Uh, I think you're a little confused here. <laughs> She's like, then she'll say stuff like, maybe we shouldn't be watching this movie. They're yeah. saying naughty words, you know. She gets all <laughs> uh, like, uh, go to bed, you little uh, psycho. Quite, <laughs> quite right. Quite. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Um. So you live, you you live right next to the ocean, right? I, I think- yeah. Yeah. It's um like a, a five minute walk to the beach, if that two minutes. Yeah. So that, cool. yeah, I've seen some photos. It looks beautiful. I was going to ask you about like, um, I mean, we obviously, we, everyone's had a terrible last few years uh, um, and still not, not doing so great in a lot of ways, but yeah. things have cleared up a little bit, but how has, how was it for you during all this kind of stuff? I mean, it, it must be nice having the ocean nearby. You can at least go there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, at, at least yeah, you got some uh, fresh air, and uh, you know things are quite a little bit spaced out there, so um, you know, it's, it's easier to social distance there. Um, but uh, no, it's been probably the same as everywhere else. Um, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't like to be living in uh, London or commuting uh, yeah. right now. Um, I mean, we, we've also got a. Um, uh, sort of uh, isolate a bit at the moment anyway, because uh, Cash is having a, a, an operation soon. So um, we're kind of mm. you know, being extra careful as well. And it's it's kind of frustrating sort of seeing everyone saying that, oh, we're back to normal now, you know, the pandemic's over, great, woo yeah. Um, yeah. And so we're like, no, <laughs> there's another variant coming up. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that can be a bit frustrating but um yeah 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 it's 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 interesting um like we moved out we had to leave chicago um yeah i heard about that cuz yeah it just was i mean i've lived there for 26 years and i love the city i'm i'm only 20 miles away um but we, we were like we first of all I was tired of paying rent <laughs> it's, it's like spent waste it, it's very expensive in chicago um so for less than what i was paying for rent i i was able to buy a home with a yard in a yeah. nice safe neighborhood wow. i haven't heard a gunshot in about a year <laughs> which is amazing so that, so that is completely alien to us it's like yeah. you know, even in london it probably you know you wouldn't hear um yeah. hear anything no uh, during the pandemic chicago got it just got bad like there was tons of rioting and um, it, it, like I remember just before we ended up moving and I was in a pretty nice neighborhood. Like we, we had, we had to move a few years before because our neighborhood that we were in was, was pretty dangerous. And we didn't know when we moved in that it was that bad, mm-hmm. um, but we had signed a lease and it was this whole thing. So it took us a while to get out of that area. But for, for a few years, we were in a really bad place. Then we moved to this neighborhood that was pretty nice. But during the pandemic, things just got crazy. Just um, there was shootings all over the place and just, you know, buildings being burned. But just before we moved to the burbs um, out here, uh, I I went for a walk and there was just a car on fire. Like and it had bullet holes in it and everything. And it was just it was in it was in this this. right outside this grocery store just sitting there on fire and it's like this is like the new norm like yeah. people are just walking by like it's not a big deal i'm like this is like the word what is happening here it yeah. was crazy um and there was more and more things like that happening and it's like i don't want to be in, in this city anymore <laughs> like, yeah 
especially um, with a young young family that must be yeah so i haven't been so back worrying. i've only been back a couple times since we've moved um and i love it out here man it's just so nice it's like everyone so i feel like i'm living in a rockwell painting right now oh wow like everyone's friendly and you know that pe- like the kids in the summertime have lemonade stands in the front yards it's like what's happening you know it's nice <laughs> well, um in the 60s movie yeah yeah so um excuse me um <laughs> excuse me i was gonna ask you about your so your portrait stuff uh you what, what kind of commissions are you doing like, are you doing like large oil paintings like portraits for people or, or like what's the what's the sizes that you're working on it's uh well, all sizes it's um I mean, it's mostly uh pets we, we um uh oh yes yeah. i've I, seen some of hers um i didn't realize you were doing that as well yeah, yeah. well I, I kind of um uh sort of uh, fell along with it really yeah um i've seen her because, stuff because, she's been killing it like she's, she's amazing yeah. yeah some of these paintings are incredible yeah she's amazing. so good and she's so fast as well um you know i uh, i do do a painting in i don't know i'm embarrassed to say how long it takes me um but she'll like just knock a whole painting out in like uh, a couple of days and uh yeah um awesome. but uh you know this uh and it's not she doesn't lose quality either she's just and she's really good with values and yeah um you're just like so, <laughs> i think i'm gonna go for a walk <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I'm, awesome. I'm fine i'm fine with it you know it's yeah uh, yeah that's cool though so you guys have basically kind of built up a, a nice business there doing the, the pet portrait stuff yeah um, pretty much yeah i mean it's it's a um yeah it's, it's a good business yeah do you, do you find it um i mean because i've done a, a fair amount of pet portraits myself but do you find it <clears throat> excuse me do you find it more difficult being that because i, I kind of feel like people pet people are a little bit nuts like they 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 love their dog more than their own kids like you know what i mean like yeah. do, you, do you run into like you know the nose isn't right and you're like what it's exactly the same like, what are you talking about no no i don't no, really don't find that at all no oh, okay no i mean um if anything um you know compared to the illustration work um you know the amount of sort of I don't want to call them problem clients, but um, <laughs> you know the amount of issues we have with with clients is is very small. Most people are, are just um, so excited to receive the the painting and, and complimentary. Yeah. And no, I, 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 think, I, I think maybe it's because you're you're in in England and people have manners. It, it uh, might be res- that they're respect- English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious because. Yeah. Americans can be <laughs> bastards, I tell you. Uh, no, there's I'm not gonna, I'm not, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't care. Uh, it's, uh, no, I've. I mean, for the most part, I've had good experiences, but I, I have found like a few different pets that I've done for people. They're like, it just doesn't have the twinkle in his eye, and I'm like, I, I'm. You only gave me one photo to work from, and I am. It looks exactly like it, so I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, and. and mm, I- I, don't know. I find <laughs> like, I, I think what we've what we found is that it's more yeah. the, the people that are like that are, are more the ones who aren't willing to pay the higher prices mm. um so because when we started raising our prices um then uh we we got less of uh people who were picky about yeah that makes uh, sense the end products um and you know most people like especially for the really big uh paintings they'll just sort of be so blase about it and they'll mm. just yeah well you know i'll just transfer money and um just send it when you're ready and or you know if there's a deadline then yeah you know they're, they're much more relaxed about it um that's good it's a it's a very different sort of uh working relationship and it just it just makes the whole process go um so smoothly and it's you know it's even a, a pleasure to do the paintings because you know you feel different about the work you're doing um and i you know i don't care that there's a a stigma maybe in the art business about um doing pets and you know people 
think that you know you're doing your um you know you can't get a proper job in the art world so you're doing pets um that's yeah that you not who cares you not think that yeah <laughs> no, i know no, no i i mean the way i look at it is, is like this any any art job that anyone gets you should be grateful for that job and exactly. you're 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 doing you know you're doing what you love and you're getting paid for it you know yeah. a lot, not a lot of people can say that you know and there's nothing I, I mean i think pet portraits is a very smart thing to do because i mean mm. most people have pets and they love their pets yeah. um i think one thing you said it makes a lot of sense too like when if you you know <laughs> you know obviously the more you're getting paid the, you know if you if you raise your price up um the better you feel as an artist while working at it because you oh, know yeah. you're, you're getting paid well and it makes you want to be there <laughs> you know it's yeah. there's nothing worse than get doing a commission and you and you're like i should have been paid way more for this and then you're yeah. killing oh, it's yourself awful. it's yeah. like and, oh. and we've you know both of us have, have fallen into that trap oh yeah yeah it's so many not... times and you know we've, we've you know been burnt too many times and learned learned our lesson yeah 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 that's not fun that's that's the worst I've, I've that's happened to me a few times and you're just like what am i doing um i, I remember it was in one of the conventions and you, you told me about a, a, a cover that you did um it's, i can't remember what convention i think it was um was it reno maybe and uh you told me about a cover that you did and they were paying like 200 dollars or something Oh, I it might have been one of my first, like some of my first um, commission, some of my first published work, I was doing these religious satire magazines, uh, the, the Wittenberg Door. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like 200 a cover. And that's ridiculous. And I would kill myself uh, because I was trying to like, I wanted to, to get other work. So. Yeah, I, I would spend way, way too much, way, way, like it was ridiculous how much time I would spend on them. And then, no. um, and then a couple of them, like I, they even cracked magazine. I, I was doing a bunch of garbage for them, and um, they never paid me. <laughs> uh. I never got paid for them. Um, but yeah, you got to start somewhere, you know. Um, uh. I kind of looked at it as, you know. This is only this is temporary until you know the other doors open. So you know. So I yeah I I would think that. Um, and I was doing some jobs for the Radio Times, and uh, they were I, I would spend quite a long time on them, um, well a few days anyway. Um, and it was like two hundred pounds uh, for each one, and they were being printed really small. Like the the print size was like. This you can need a magnifying glass to yeah to see it. Even so, I'm putting all this work in, and um, yeah. and, and you know they they would occasionally they would commission you for a slightly bigger piece, like once a year or something. Um, so it was kind of worth doing those to get the big commission. But then they stopped giving those, and you know they wouldn't do covers or anything like that. And but I would keep getting these two hundred pound pieces, and you know, it's just. If you're not sort of progressing or it's not getting you anywhere, then you're just yeah. going to be frustrated. It's it's interesting too. Like I, my my perception on the, or my uh, I guess way of thinking about it has changed as far as illustration because, like I I used to be I you know where I would do like really quick spot illustrations, and I would just put I wanted to paint it as tight and as realistic as possible, mm -hmm. and. I don't know if I was just trying to prove to everyone how, that how good I am or, or I'm, you know, whatever it is, but then it would be stupid because when it would come out, it would be like this big, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, you don't really, you don't see the only way you see what I actually did is if you follow my blog and then you get to see a close up and you're like, Whoa, look at, he painted the pores in the skin. Uh, and it was a waste of time. And then, yeah. and then I started realizing, okay, let's look, this is how much I'm getting paid. Why am I killing myself? You know, if I, if I can do the same, like right now, um, I've been doing a, a lot of stuff for the Washington Examiner, but I haven't done it. Something I have actually worked for them for a couple months now, but like um, I was doing these quick spots for them, mm -hmm. uh, which was, which I actually liked better than doing the cover because um, the, sorry. 
So it's the same art director as, as um, the Weekly Standard. Yeah, yep. I, I yeah. did some a few from. Yeah, yeah, yeah same with Philip. And um, yeah. so, like, I had I've done a ton of covers for for the Washington Examiner, um, and they usually only give you a day and a half to two days to do it, yeah. and you kill yourself. And the pay is okay. It's not like mind blowing, but for two days of work. I think it's pretty good. And the nice thing about them is they pay you like really very quickly. Uh, like a lot of clients like time magazine or uh, bigger, bigger magazines, they have like a 30 day uh, or some clients are 90 days to pay you. And it's like, wow. I just murdered myself to get this thing for you. And then now I don't get paid. So that's one thing that's great about that. The Washington examiners, they pay quickly, but I started finding out that I, I much would rather do, I mean, doing a cover every once in a while is great because it's good exposure, you know? Um, I'm not as, I mean, I'm, I'm all for doing covers, but I've already done so many for them that I started thinking about the spy illustrations. Um, I usually only get a day, but I get, om- the spy illustration pays almost what they're paying for the cover. Oh, really? Almost. Huh. Um, and, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is less stressful. I can, and, and what I've been doing is I've been painting, uh, it's usually a funny caricature, which is, I just love doing that. So mm-hmm. what I, what I would do for them is I, I know it's only going to be published about this big. So I paint it small from a distance yeah. with big brushes. I barely zoom in and I just make sure it looks good at this size. And, and that, and then, and then I zoom in, it's like really loose. But when you see it on online or you see it in print, it looks really nice. And it's like, it's, it's a nice way to like people like loose, make the money. And, yeah. and it still looks realistic. Like I still, I'm still getting the realistic values and all that stuff down, but I'm not like killing myself for all these details that don't really matter at that size. You know, yeah. it's, it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> you know, like, I think we, we, we get hung up on realism. Oh yeah, 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 and it's easy to do that, you know. Like, do you remember? You remember Ishmael Rolden? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, my father-in-law just wrote me. I found a mower repair shop. Thank you, <laughs> Dad. Um, I have to fix my lawnmower. Um, <laughs> right. Anyways, um, what was I saying? What was the last thing? Ishmael. <laughs> oh, Ishmael. Yes. Ishmael. Um, so I, I was a huge fan of his, and. Uh... I, I remember, you know, just I, I started to teach myself how to paint by looking at his stuff. And to me, it was so tight and it was so, you know, mm. um, and I would and I, I ended up like doing all this acrylic, really tight acrylic paintings. And I would, um, you know, I got a little teeny brushes with small little hairs and just get so tight. And then one day um, we swapped paintings. Like, I, I don't remember what I gave him one of my paintings. He gave me one of his. And um, he actually sent me a couple of his paintings. And when I got them, I was like, are you kidding me? They're so simple. They're like, uh-huh. they're way, they're, they're bigger than I thought. And they're super loose yeah. and almost more cartoony. But when you shrink them down to a, like how the Wall Street Journal published or whatever, it has yeah. this. So I was like trying to teach myself how to paint what I was seeing in print, which looks really tight. Yeah. And then he wrote me, he goes, he goes, whoa, your paintings are super tight. I'm like, yeah, that, that's what you were doing. <laughs> you know? But it was it was amazing to see that because I, I just realized, like, well, I don't need to do that. I can still get almost the same look with less the work. Yeah, um, yeah it's interesting. I try to tell people that all the time. Like, you loosen up, like, zoom away. Um, <laughs> yeah. You save yeah. yourself nice. a lot of stress and, you know. And it's then you're, you're able to... Uh, and then you're, you're able to take on jobs that don't pay as well, but you don't really care because if you can put in, if you can come up to something that makes you feel good, you know, as far as timeline goes, like, like, I don't, I don't mind making that money if I'm only spending a day, you know, that's other, other than that, it's like, I don't know, you have to kind of justify it sometimes. Um. <laughs> Maybe, but also, I, I, I don't think, um, you should devalue because um, you've still had to learn to get to that point where you you can be loose. Yeah, being being loose and and making it look real um, is a skill that you've learned over years of 
doing all yeah. those tight renderings. Right. So that has value as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that's like, and it's I think it's something you continue to to learn because I I kind of I kind of feel like painting, like my, some my, some of my favorite paintings are like the ones that are really brushy and expressive and loose. Um, you see them up close, and it looks like a mess. But when you step back, it just comes together. I love that. That's mm. not easy to do, though. That's like, that, that's that's still something that, for me, I'm like, I would like to do more of that. But it's way harder than it seems. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you know, um, I'm blanking on his name, Dunlop, or um, what is his name? I've had him on my podcast, and I'm blanking on his name right now. Uh, a painter? Yeah. Dun Dunlap or something like that. Um, I'm gonna look up uh on my think. I don't know. But um anyways, I'm gonna we're gonna I wanna show you some fan art really soon. Um cool. But but I wanna uh I wanna find this guy's name real quick because if you don't follow this guy, you should follow this guy. Um mm. he I cannot believe I can't remember his name right now. There are so many amazing artists on Instagram. I forget. Oh, yeah, so, so many. Yeah. Um, where is it? Let's see. And I think, by the way, this is my 163rd podcast. Congratulations. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, That's a lot of work. It, it is a lot of extra work. Why can I not find him? Um, must have had him on longer ago than I realized. Oh, Hollis Dunlap. Ah, you know who that is, Hollis. Hollis, Hollis Dunlap. The name rings a bell. Um. Oh. Anyways, you look Hollis Dunlap up on Instagram. His paintings are some of my favorite. Like his paintings, I just love so much. His brushwork. Um. It, oh yeah. So yeah, it's all right looking now, yeah. Yeah, so good. Just beautiful oh. color use and. Oh man! Um, the way he destroys edges and um, yeah. yeah, his his work is awesome, man. It's just his, his self portraits are yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, he's use of color awesome. as well. Oh yeah, he pushes it like he's a got lot. That sub subdued palette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's great, man. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Um, let's see here. Really cool guy too. I had him on, on the podcast. He's really nice. Oh, cool. Um, so let me share uh, my screen with you. Sure. Let me know if you see this. Mm -hmm. You see that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. I like it. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of glad I did all those um, funny expressions now. Yeah. You know what? I forgot real quick before. Really... You Sorry. know what? Let's pretend that. Let's pretend that we didn't do that. <laughs> okay. I, didn't, I haven't seen a thing. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen a thing. That never I happened. just realized. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <Not> recording. <clears throat> it's all right. I don't mind. This is this is real life, people. I just realized that I have a, a fan question for you. It's actually oh, one okay. fan who's got three questions for you. Wow. And um, he, for some reason, he doesn't want part of it heard so i'm gonna to have to edit this out some of it but anyways i'm gonna play this for you and then we'll, we'll try to answer the questions and then we'll look at the fan art okay now here are the three questions for paul i've got three. First question for paul moise from bob dornfried connecticut usa and that is if you could have been any artist in history which artist would it have been and why all right so i'm going to pause that, that question there and then we'll Ooh. go to the next question <laughs> do i have to answer that now yeah yeah answer it now oh hey. my god I... say just say just say it jason seiler um <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can just no, answer you now it's right out of my mouth yeah, yeah yeah and then we'll do the next one <laughs> uh god it's a really hard question um God, I, I can't even think. Um, which artist? Oh, Damn. I don't know. It, it would probably be... Um, I don't think it would be an artist. I think it would be um, a filmmaker. Mm. Um, that's, probably, an, that's an artist. Yeah. Maybe uh, uh, Ray Harryhausen. 
Who is that? Um, animation. The the he's an animator. Oh, okay, okay. Or was. Um, uh, maybe I'm saying it saying the name wrong. I don't know. Um, he did uh, Clash of the Titans. You know all the stop motion mm. and King Kong. Oh yeah, okay. Um, like the original. Are you yeah, talking about the original? Yeah, the, the, okay. the original. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah the, the stop motion, ah, the black and okay. white stuff. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah, probably something like that. Um, in terms of painters, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, That's a weird question. I've never thought. Maybe I wish I could have Bougereau. Been. Bougereau, perhaps. But then, you know, it's like, yeah. I, 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 I would say Michelangelo would be cool because, you know, there, there, there had to be some amazing orgies back then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> there had to be some, some fun times had to be had uh, back then. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Italy. Yeah. Um, I obviously didn't do my research in that um, <laughs> answer, answering that question. Yeah, I mean, can I, I go, know, can I go back and re Yeah, I know he's sw he's sw he swang more towards the fellas, which uh, that's not my way, I but that's cool. Did, yeah. That's cool. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a problem uh, hanging out with. But I mean, you're, I would just be tied a, into that answer. Now. I'd be a different Michelangelo. Like, if I, and, um, mine would be. Uh, yeah, I don't. Michelangelo, I think, is one of the coolest artists, though. I love Michelangelo. Yeah, I don't know. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just I, can't I, believe the stuff that he did. Like the the David at twenty six years old. That's crazy. It's unreal to me. But. <laughs> Yeah, and the size of it. It's, oh yeah, it's huge. It, it's it. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's a weird question. Anyways, let's. Yeah, let's it's really really hard to answer. Yeah. Um. By the way, I like how we said Connecticut, USA. Like, is there any other <laughs> Connecticut? I mean, no, pretty, no pretty offense. Well, no well offense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Okay, so yeah. here's the next question. Hi, here's another question for Paul Moyes from Bob Dornfried, Connecticut, USA. It's a little different, but I'm curious. If you could have been any animal in the animal kingdom, which one would it be and why? <laughs> ah. I don't say uh, Jason Seiler. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, um, maybe, I don't know, uh, a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> that's too on the nose i think uh, i don't know <laughs> i could see you as a sloth just like i oh, like climbing things. up the tree really slow <laughs> <laughs> i get there in oh. the end <laughs> oh man yeah why, oh, okay. If, okay if if it's sloth why why would you say it's, like why because that's yeah i have no idea I, it's, i'm not basing it on any sort of rational um thinking that's oh. a terrible animal to, to want to be i okay i if, if i was going to choose an animal um i've thought about this actually before um <sighs> i i would want to be a killer whale because uh. they are they're most like human and they're social and you get you know, they, they stay together, they're tight with their family, um, and they get to travel around quite a bit. Uh, they're, they're not afraid of anything. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, and I don't know, I think any other kind of animal to me just sounds terrible. Like, like I don't know, man. That's the first thing that comes to my head is, you know, why would I want to be any anim <laughs> animal? I'm happy being here. <laughs> yeah. But but you but the, but you said right. the worst one. Like you said a sloth. <laughs> I don't know why I said sloth. That's so I mean, bad. The, the, other, the other alternative is um like, I wanna uh, be a caterpillar. But, uh, like, <laughs> like <laughs> I wanna I wanna live for 24 hours. I wanna see what that's like. Uh <laughs> I'll be a butterfly in the two uh, days. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh God! Yeah. Plus, killer whales have a long lifespan. That's like I'm, you know, it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Or, or the the uh, tortoise from the Gal Galapagos Islands that lives for four hundred years. Oh. Man, I mean, the, see again, you chose an animal the other that, extreme. that can barely walk <laughs> or move, but he lives four hundred years. So 
you have it's like being in prison for a long time <laughs> Yeah, like, it's like four. That's four life sentences. <laughs> I'm wondering what this says about me. It like, like, okay, if, I don't know because, like, if I would choose like a lion over an antelope, but you'd probably choose the antelope. And it's like, why would you want to choose something that's gonna be eaten? You have to spend your whole life running from a lion. That does not sound fun. <laughs> Tortoise doesn't get eaten. No, no, no. I'm just saying, this like, for 400 years. I'm just saying, if you chose an antelope. Um, oh, instead yeah. of a lion, like that's kind of like what your choices seem like to me. <laughs> like, um. like choose you got to choose an animal that like um, that does that's not going to have a rough life, man. <laughs> the turtle sounds like a terrible life, so long and slow, and you got to eat <laughs> bugs and like oh, if humans eat bugs, yeah, that's true, <laughs> but we at least cook them or something, you know. Yeah, that's true. So here's here's the last question. These are fun questions. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Bob Dorfried from Connecticut, USA. And I've got a question for you. And that is, if you could rank your senses in order of importance, one being the most important and five being the least, how would you rank them and why? And why? Okay, that's Ah. it. Jason, I uh, can't wait to um, hopefully attend live your recording of Paul. If not, I'm sure it's going to be oh. someplace that I can have. We don't need to have that part on there. Uh, okay. Cool. So, right. senses. Um, well, sight. It would have to be sight, number one. Because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, there are other things you could do without sight but you know my whole life has been built on uh you know I, I, my whole creative uh life is built on visual input and um yeah. you know any sort of because uh, i you know i enjoy writing um and i read books and so you know my sort of inner imagination is i like to think it's it's pretty good but um you know if i'm like trying to come up with a, a character or something i will go to the visual side first mm-hmm. um but then if, you know if i lost it then uh you know i'm not even uh, superstitious but i'll touch wood anyway for people who are um you know if i lost it then i would have to adapt right. uh yeah but it would be really hard yeah, yeah. um well, the next one, um, I don't know, uh, hearing. <laughs> wait, wait. So wait, it's, it's, what are the, fi- it's, it's seeing, the... hearing, taste. Yeah. Uh, smell. Smell and what? Touch. Touch? Yeah. Hmm. Then, I mean, they're all pretty damn important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, okay. How about this? Let's, let's. Because I want to get onto the fan art here real quick. Sure. Uh, I, I I agree. I I would not want to not be able to see. But which one could you do? You think you could live without? Like that might be a better way of putting it. Yeah. Um. I mean. Pro- probably. Uh. Smell maybe. Yeah, because you want to be able to touch That's, things. Yeah. Like, like, if I couldn't feel a woman's boob anymore, <laughs> I think I would be just destroyed by that. You feel yeah. women's boobs? All the time. <laughs> I do. I, it's like my thing, you know? Like, um, <laughs> when do you have time for that? <laughs> oh, man, as much as possible. Um, you know what? Yeah. I think, though, like, uh, taste, I, I would like to, I think I would like to lose taste because it would help me lose weight. Uh, I need to, you know, maybe if I'm like nothing tastes good. I just, I just like, well, I just put in enough fuel for just, I'll just eat oatmeal. Yeah. Just eat the bare necessities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't have to, you know, I'm a, there's not no more pizza, but, the, but at the same time, um, <laughs> sorry to rain on that parade, but um, if you didn't have taste, you wouldn't know if something was off oh. and you would, so you would probably die. <laughs> That is true. Oh man, uh, it's a it's an impossible uh, question. You can't 
Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I kind of agree. Awesome. With you. I like I, I like all the senses. I think they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm down with the senses. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Let's look. Thank at Thank you some for fan the art. questions. Bob. <laughs> yeah, those are fun questions. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's go back. Where's the sh- OK? Here's the share. So let's go back to sharing. So let me know when you see it. Oh, man. OK. So um, <laughs> We'll try to go through these kind of quick, but if you want to say something about them, you can, because I think sure. there's there's quite a bit. But um, okay, so this one is by Dan McConnell. Wow, and uh, I that's great. Yeah, I think it definitely captured you. Oh yeah, it's brilliant likeness. Yeah, I, I love the expression. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely my eyes. I think a lot of people chose this uh, reference. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, oh. oops. Whoa, 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 too much. <laughs> oh, wow. That's also really cool. Yeah. This is by Dustin Clark. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like the that's style amazing. of this one. Yeah. The expression is, I love the, um, yeah. The, I mean, I wish my jawline was like that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a nice flow to it. Yeah. Like the, the design yeah. of it's nice. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. The, the um, relationship between the neck and the, and the head is, really good yeah this is pretty cool oh uh, wow this oh, is I love that gouache i think he said wow that's beautiful yeah this is by yeah. uh mr mr ponce yeah mr. i like this one it's nice it's nice gorgeous. uh nice painter painterly style painterly. And... yeah and I, I love the um uh, the flowing i love the uh sort of treatment of the edges yeah it's good yeah, it's got a very, um, it's almost Picasso esque mm. uh, treatment to it. Yeah. That's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> what the <laughs> heck is going on there? I love this one. This is brilliant. It's by Pablo Salas. <clears throat> yeah. I just love it. I love his work. He, uh, that's he's, really he's, he's, that's me doing the Mr. Bean, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bean. Um, <laughs> But I yeah, that, that pose. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. It's got it's a great uh, gesture. The the pose is awesome. That's exactly how I draw. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. this is cool. This is by Jacques Lemoni. Oh, wow, nice. Amazing. Yeah, love it. That's Some really nice cool. uh, cross hatching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is by Bob. How's that, Bob's? Yeah, Bob Dorn Dornfried. Oh wow! Oh, I love those collars. That's really cool. <laughs> oh, th- thanks, Bob. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really nice. Yeah. This is, a- <laughs> this is by Ray Shipman. Uh, <laughs> wow. This one. It's I- funny the way the lip is. In this it looks like you uh, like someone's got like your lip on a fish line or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like just tugging it. He's got me. Yeah. I love the uh, bloodshot eyes. Yeah. That's that's me after a, a 3D <laughs> session. <laughs> wow. This is by Paula Petlawani. Um, wow. wow four, great. Forehead is spot on. That's... Yeah. But they've, they've <laughs> it definitely captured something. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And that's definitely my <laughs> um, palette. Yeah. Yeah. This oh wow! By uh, Mark Davy. Wow, I, I kind of look uh, like cartoony, or I look like yeah. a um, uh, like a, a Homer Simpson or something. <laughs> or no, it reminds me of a um, <laughs> Homer Simpson with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> it does. Oh my god! You're right. You, you just made that yellow. <laughs> yeah, she's yellow. <laughs> but no, I love I love the the rendering of it. It's uh, it's, it's very um. Uh, that, that caught me off guard. Very, that, dist- <laughs> very distinctive. It's fucking funny. rendering. <laughs> oh my god! But I, lo- I love the way the, the eyes are looking at you. And uh-huh. It's there's, there's something kind of haunting about it. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so funny. 
That was spot is spot on. You look like Homer Simpson <laughs> for sure. That is hilarious, dude. <laughs> oh man, uh, that one not so much. <laughs> yeah, this was but, this was by Guy uh, uh, Kiernan. 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 Yeah. yeah. But it's really oh, good. Man. Really good rendering. Yeah. Really good lightness. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. It's hilarious. Okay. This one. <laughs> oh wow. This yeah, this one wow, looks that's... like you someone hit you in the head with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those cartoons are like, like oh yeah yeah, yeah but i have funny. you know i um at the conventions oh, um we uh, i would always get bumps on my head um <laughs> like or drawings of um oh they would do that people would always like zone in on my head is super bumpy um <laughs> but i never realized that the bumps were in those places yeah <laughs> That's yeah. pretty funny. But, no, that's that's it's lovely. exaggerating. Love it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. This one's awesome. This is by oh, Dominic wow. Zeilinger. Yeah, it, it makes me mad sometimes when when artists like like Dominic just they capture so like it looks so basic, but it's not it's so simple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like man, like how do you? I just don't think that way. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I've done it before, but it's like. You know, I have to think a little bit. You have to, it's like a different way of thinking. You yeah, know? it's so abstract. Yeah, I but love it's, it. It's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's that expression again. Oh yeah. wow! This is by. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking very. Um, uh, Breaking Bad. There, what's his name? Yeah, you're. You're right. It looks like. Um, <sighs> I'm blanking on his name right now too. Yeah, Brian Cranston. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah. That looks very much like him. This is by yeah. um, Juan Juancho uh, Gutierrez. Ah, oh, that's great. I apologize if I said your name weird, but yeah, oh, I love the rendering on the nose. <laughs> um, th- this is by Amir Mel- Malkish. Oh wow, that's great. It's very um, <clears throat> uh, fluharty esque. Very yeah. sort of um, yeah. yeah. The the pencil strokes are very um it's like that uh, oh, he's, uh and yet if they leave the pencil there like this the blind blind the, contour does, does Tom get a like a ten percent uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, there are a few people drawing with, with these and, and uh, this and the colors. signature is like Tom Fluharty's too. It is <laughs> come on man. <laughs> There's already one guy drawing with blue way too much. Now we don't need another, okay. No, I love giving Tom a hard time. <laughs> yeah. No, so it's a compliment. Yeah, that's a compliment. No, this is really, this is a nice drawing. It's cool. Yeah. No, no, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice expression. They're getting that eyebrow. Yeah. Have you seen Tom's been posting these like quicker sketches lately? The last couple of days are really good. I didn't catch those. No. Yeah, I think it's on Instagram maybe, but he's been like, oh, okay. You know, filming himself do quick ones and they're pretty awesome to watch. All right. Well, I'll check yeah. them out. This is by Jeremy the Artist. Oh, wow. Well, I think I cool. yeah, I think I he, I follow him on uh, Facebook maybe. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I, I love the um, that's really unusual um, uh, hatching, like the the uh, horizontal not horizontal the vertical yeah yeah um, <coughs> lines. It's it's really illustrative, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Love the shading. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Something. You kind of look like um, one of the seven dwarfs a little bit, like you know what I mean? Yeah, like that. There's something about the. It's very funny how he drew your nose. Yeah. The, okay. it, oh, all right. That's the last one. So, er, thank you so much, everybody, for submitting those. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite is the Homer Simpson one <laughs> by far. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this up, and Paul and I are doing um, a special uh, bonus episode. On, that's going to be um, available at my Patreon at patreon.com slash Jason Seiler. And I'm going to hand over everything to Paul and he's going to show some stuff that he's been working on, the things that he's doing. And we're going to take a in-depth look at his art and process and that sort of a thing. So everyone make sure to check that out. It's going to be really cool. Um, before we head out for this, uh, is there anything you want to let people know or follow you and all that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, the main ones are probably uh, Instagram. Uh, the one for caricature is uh, Moise Paul 
so at Moise Paul. Um, and I've got another one that hasn't got as much stuff on it yet, but for the 3D, um, that's Paul Moise Art. Okay. So at on Paul Moise Art. On Instagram? On Instagram, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, Paul. And we'll see you thank guys you. Uh, next time. Cheers.